Good morning and welcome to Bible study today. Hope you all are doing well and uh, staying safe and uh, ready to get into God's Word this morning. Um, hope you've had a good weekend and uh, on this Tuesday um, able to experience God in, in new ways and in fresh ways uh, today. So uh, I, I glad hope you can can join us uh this morning and uh if you're there say uh hello and uh hopefully the uh the internet stream is going to go well uh today last couple of weeks it's been choppy um so i've been trying to do some things to improve the internet and uh, hopefully it's nice and smooth so uh if uh, there's any lags or stuff like that let me know um but either way we're just going to keep rolling uh, i've heard the audio has always been good so hopefully you can at least uh, listen to it and uh, i'm praying you can see it as well too so uh let me uh, pray for us and let's jump into it lord jesus we thank you for your goodness and for your grace and uh, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning because we need it. We thank you that you're a good, good father that cares for us and we can look to you. And when we look to you, we see you are okay. And if you're okay, we're going to be okay too. So we trust in you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Would love uh, to hear some God sightings uh, from you guys. I'm going to share uh, one myself. God sighting is just a way that that uh, you've seen the, the presence of God, maybe in big ways or in small ways. Um, so I'll share one the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, it's uh, night times uh, have been a little bit rough in our, our house, our, our little one. Just uh, kind of a hard, having a hard time sleeping again. There's long stretches where she does well, and then other times where it's um, where it's tough. And so lately, it's just been mama, mama, mama. And if I go in, it doesn't really matter. She just wants mama. Uh, and uh, but we've been working on things and and trying to ask, okay, why why aren't you sleeping? And and uh, um, lately, she's been saying, I'm scared. I'm scared. So Becca, of course, has been working this great thing to just ask, say, okay, if you're scared, here are three things you can do. You can pray to Jesus um, to give you peace. Uh, you can um, sing a song to yourself, um, or you can think of something happy. Um, so last night she was having a hard time, and I went in there, and she said, I'm, I'm scared. And I said, okay, well, you know, Mommy said we can do these things, so let's pray. And so we prayed together, and she's really cute, uh, our three-year-old, um, that she will, will, every time we say pray, she'll put her hands together and close her eyes, and then amen. Um, and so we did that and then said, okay, you can sing yourself a song. Uh, and then I said, okay, now you can think of something happy. What are things that make you happy? And she said, daddy. I'm like, oh, well, that's nice. Daddy makes you happy. I said, what else makes you happy? Doggies. Okay. I said, what else makes you happy? Isaac. That's her um, cousin who's in college. Uh, that's probably her favorite person out who doesn't live in our house. Um, and, uh, and so we said, okay, think of those happy things. And uh, I, then I walked away and she went to sleep, which was great because uh, other times this week it's just been in and out and in and out and, um, and uh, she actually went to sleep. She woke up again at five in the morning, but we, I went in, did the same thing, let's pray, sing a song to yourself, think of what makes you happy and uh, she went back to sleep. And so this was kind of the first night in a while where being able to do that without having to wake up mommy and bring mommy in. Uh, where uh, where I was able to get her to, to go back to sleep. So that was a God sighting. This is something we've been, been praying for. And, you know, as, as you guys know, she's a, our foster daughter. So she has, um, you know, just kind of comes with her own own baggage and and, um, and history and, and trauma. So uh, being able to, to care for her and see her doing well is good. Um, but it's also been a God sighting to me because I know I feel my own anxiety and, and fear and, and things that are stressing me out at times and realizing, hmm, can I apply the same methodology in my own life when I'm not able to sleep or when I'm stressing out? Um, and so I've been trying to do that to myself today too, saying, okay, what's stressing me out? What's causing me fear? And let me pray about it. If I need to sing a song, I've been, you know, play some worship music and think about the things that, that make me happy. Uh, Philippians 4 says, whatever is good, whatever is beautiful, whatever is right, whatever is praiseworthy, think on these things. Um, so uh, that's uh, been a God sighting to me is that uh, what he's given to us, not just for our little one, uh, is for me as well too. And maybe it's for, for, for you also. Uh, when you can't sleep or when you're stressed out or when you're afraid, pray about it. Say, <laughs> sing a song to yourself. Listen to worship music, something that, 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 um, that inspires you. Um, and think on the things that, that, bring you, that bring you joy. 
So that's my God sighting today. I would love to hear if you have some God sightings, uh, share that. Uh, if you're able to hear me and see me without like terrible lag or without me sounding like a robot, that's also a God sighting because apparently there's been issues with that in the stream and, and, uh, and I hope this is smooth for you guys. So we are gonna get into it now this morning into the word of God, John chapter five, verses 16 through 30. We're continuing to work our way through the Gospel of John. And just a reminder, we're moving to once a week Bible study, so we will not have Bible study on Thursday because I'm leading Kids Club uh, as well. Um, and so uh, I, it's just too much to be able to double up uh, uh, two Bible studies uh, at the same time for prep work. Um, so we're just doing Tuesday. And uh, yeah, at times I'm like, oh man, you know, we're doing that. But I realize, you know, most churches like, you know, pastors probably lead once a week Bible study. It's all right. I think because I started out this uh, quarantine with four times a week, uh, it kind of set a high bar. But uh, you guys are good on once a week, right? And then uh, other Bible studies. Gather together with each other. Uh, listen to some of the, the archived ones that you might have missed. Um, but uh, you can continue to, to study God's Word uh, together and find somebody else to, to do it with as well. But we'll keep you doing once a week, Tuesday night, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Bible studies. So John chapter 5, um, verse 16 starts here it says so because jesus was doing these things on the sabbath the jewish leaders began to persecute him in his defense jesus said to them my father is always at work to this very day and i too am working for this reason they tried all the more to kill him not only was he breaking the sabbath but he was even calling god his own father making himself equal to god okay so if you remember uh, what happened leading up to, to this at uh, the uh, beginning of John chapter 5 is that Jesus had, had gone uh, to the, the pool where people want to go for healing and he healed this man um, that, that was an invalid for 38 years and uh, he told him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And he did. Jesus just commanded. He didn't have to... to throw him in the pool. He didn't have to touch him. He didn't. He just said, get up. And it took faith of this man to actually stand up who hasn't stood up maybe in his whole life, but definitely for 38 years. And he stood up and did exactly what Jesus told him to do. And then some other people saw him later. And this was the Sabbath day, which for the Jewish uh, people, this is their day of worship, but also their day of rest. And that they, uh, at this point, were taking this very, very seriously and literally of do no work, no matter what. And seeing this man carrying his mat, they said, well, that's work. You're, you're carrying something, that's work. And the man said, uh, yeah, but this guy just healed me and he told me to carry my mat, so um, I don't care, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. This guy just healed me after not being able to walk for 38 years, so um, yeah, I'm gonna carry my mat. Um, and then the, the guys, the, the Jewish leader said, wait a minute. Someone healed you today? No, no, no. You can't heal anybody on the Sabbath. This is a day of no work. Healing is work. And so they came and they, they found Jesus and they gave him a hard time about it. No, you can't heal people on the Sabbath. And this is going to be a common theme. This is going to come up at other um, uh, parts in the gospel where Jesus is like, really? You're going to be mad at me for healing someone on the Sabbath because this is work? He's like, that's not the reason why the Sabbath was created, to stop people from doing good. Um, and, and so we, we see this, but here, this is Jesus's answer. My father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. All right, friends, this is going to open us up into this really great section of scripture um, that has been just an encouragement to me, even as I've just been preparing for the, uh, this, this lesson. Um, but my father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. So what we're going to see, not just in this verse, but in the verses that are about to follow, is a couple of things that I want us to pay attention to. And one is the relationship that Jesus has to his Father, the relationship that he has to God. Um, so that's one thing for us to pay. This is what's going to really reveal um, this beautiful and amazing relationship that, that, that Jesus and the Father has as part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and then also what I want us to pay attention to is then how that changes our relationship, how we can follow after Jesus uh, and have that type of relationship with Christ and that type of relationship with the Father. Because if you remember John uh, chapter 1, uh, it says that uh, to all who believe him, he uh, gave the right to be called children of God. 
So as we pay attention to this relationship, it's not just a relationship that Jesus has with the Father, but he's saying that all those who believe in him, we also can have this type of relationship. So check this out. Uh, when they're giving him a hard time, first he says, my father is always at work to this day and I too am working. So one of the, the um, things that the, the uh, people there get upset about is the fact that Jesus calls God his father. Um, my father is always at work. So um, here, you know, there are, are times where the, you know, the Jewish people might refer to God as, as our father together. We are the people of God and we are his children and he's our father. But here, Jesus makes it personal. He says, my father, my father. You know that God is your father. He loves you. He knows you by name. He created you. And in the midst of everything going on in, in our, our world, we can feel lost and we can feel like, you know, kind of not quite sure who we are or we're trying to figure things out on our own. Um, but Jesus just says, I, I look to the Father, to my Father. And he says this, my Father is always at work. He's always working. There's this worship song we've been, been singing uh, recently that says, you know, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. He's the way maker. Um, and, uh, and that's where that song takes it from this verse, um, that, G, that God never stops working. And uh, so that's just an encouragement right now where we may say, all right, what's going on? There's so many things going on in our world and in and, and our own lives. And, and God, would you do something? Would you do something? Would you, you know, are you remaining silent? And uh, God is always at work. And so he's doing something even now, even if we don't see it, even if we don't feel it, God is at work. And so Jesus says, I look to the Father and because he is always working, I'm always working. Because whatever God does, I want to do. I want to join him in what he is doing. And we see that it opens up a little bit more um, in the next verse, in verse 19, which says this. Uh, then Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because what the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater things than these, so that you will be amazed. And so here, um, Jesus is saying, I can't do anything my, by myself. I just do what I see the Father doing. And there's this beautiful relationship um, that, that we see exposed here that Jesus is saying, I just look to the Father. And whatever he does is what I'm going to do. And he's at work, so I'm going to join him in, in his work. Um, and there's this just beautiful relationship. And, and uh, I notice it, you know, like I just kind of shared the example with 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 our daughter. She looks to, to us. And mommy and daddy, are you afraid? Are you anxious? Are you worried? And if we can assure her to say, hey, we're okay. You know, mommy's okay. Daddy's okay. Um, Jeje, big sister, Jada, she's okay. We're all safe. We're not afraid. And because we're not afraid and you're with us and we take care of you, you, you don't have to be afraid either. And this is uh, uh, for us as well, as children of God, when we are feeling anxiety, worry, fear, when we are, are not sure what to do, should I, what should I do with my life? We look to the Father and say, what's he doing? Is he afraid? Is he worried? Is he scared? Is he surprised by what's going on in the world? No. So we don't have to be awesome. God is okay. He's all right. He's doing fine. And because he's doing fine and we're his children, we can be fine as well. And so it's okay for us to bring our anxiety and our worry and our fear and our, we don't know what we're doing, you know, before the Lord. Um, but even then, sometimes we're still so self-focused, right? I'm doing like this and I need this and I'm doing that. If we can just pause and look to the Father and say, what's the Father doing right now? Is he scrambling? Is he worried? Is he, uh, you know, doesn't know what's gonna happen next? No, he's fine. God is sitting on his throne. He's doing his thing, which he does every day. Uh, what he does is, is, is be love and light and hope and justice and righteousness. And he was that before. He is that now. He always will be. Jesus, he was, he is, and he is yet to come. That's what we're seeing uh, through our, our study through the book of Revelation on Sundays. Just the consistency and the constantness of Jesus Christ. 
And so when we look to the Father and see that he's doing okay, we're going to be okay too. And Jesus says, you know, I see what my father is doing and, and he's working, so I work too. I join him in what he's doing. And, and that's kind of, for me personally, has been a desire when I don't know what to do or when I'm looking for, for um, guidance is always try to say, all right, what is God doing and how can I join him in that? What is the hand of God doing and how can I join him in what he's doing? Um, in his book, Experiencing God, Henry Blackaby writes about this. Look for the hand of God. Join him in what he's doing, because that's what Jesus does. He just says, I see my father at work, and I join him in that. And so that, that's what you, we notice is to say, you know, pay attention to what is God doing. And maybe it's hard for you to notice, but, but try to see where are there moments of grace, where is there moments of work. Right now in the middle of this pandem- pandemic, it's hard to see what he's doing, but we can see he's, he's bringing out some um, new ways for people to connect, new ways uh, for, for people who are desperate, trying to seek hope. People, we have all put our hopes in our own abilities, in our own finances, in our own political parties, in our own identities, all these things, and all that's like kind of crushed right now. And so God is raising up. He's doing something new. How do we join him in that work? And that may feel like a lot of pressure to you. It's like, I don't know. I can't tell. But honestly, if we just spend time with the Father, we're going to naturally start to do what he does. The more time that, that you spend in his word, the more time you spend um, listening to him, with other people, to, um, talking about him, paying attention to him, intentionally um, uh, putting your mind and your heart towards him, you're going to start naturally doing what he does. Um, I, I notice this in my own family. I notice this in, uh, in other people uh, as well. So uh, uh, I'll share with you, um, I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls, as I'm sure many of you have. Um, however, uh, my Zoom calls, uh, several of them involve um, this guy named Jared Hostetler. Uh, some of you know Pastor Jared. He's our youth pastor uh, of our church. He is one of my closest friends, and he is a strange dude. Um, so when I'm on Zoom calls uh, with uh, and, and Jared is on the Zoom call, um, I, I kind of know I know what he's up to at this point because uh, anytime somebody else just starts spontaneously laughing and I know like I haven't told a joke, I know that Jared is like private chatting them you know jokes and comments in the in the comment section uh, privately uh, and uh, and then when Jared gets like really quiet for a moment and I see him kind of like doing some stuff with his hands, I'm like, uh oh, here it comes. And sure enough, he will inevitably send me a text. Uh, of uh, something he has created during our Zoom call. Here's uh, an example of uh, one of the texts that Jared has sent me during one of our ministry leader Zoom calls. Yeah, if you can't tell, he has uh, (laughs) handwritten out comments, speech bubbles, and uh, pasted them on my head. This particular one says, I wear spandex undies. Yeah, thank you very much, Pastor Jared. Um, so that's kind of what, what uh, he does to keep himself, uh, you know, entertained during our, our Zoom calls. Um, but this is the best thing. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Jared preached during our online uh, worship service. And, uh, and, and we were up, up uh, at the, the Watch Fellowship together at the church. And uh, his son, Andrew, and Jen uh, were, at, uh, were at home. And then Jen sent me this, uh, this text. And she said, um, Look what Andrew did during the worship service. Here we go, if I can pull this one up. And uh, this was what Jared's son Andrew made. (laughs) If you can see that, he uh, took out uh, his own uh, uh, pen and uh, (laughs) and he made a speech bubble for Jared that says, my farts stink. Uh, So (laughs) then I I just texted uh, Jen back and I just texted her, John 5, 19, which says this, whatever the father does, the son also does. <laughs> whatever the father does, the son also does. And so uh, I think it's an, you know, it's an interesting thing. It's not like Jared st- thought, hey, I want to teach my son how to uh, make speech bubbles and put it on people when they're on screen. Uh, and it's not like... Um, Andrew thought, oh, hey, how can I be close to my dad? How can I do what he does? He's just been around the dude his whole life, poor Andrew. And so he naturally is going to pick up and he's going to start doing what daddy does. 
Um, and so whether that is, is photo bombing or whether that, that is uh, Zoom uh, speech bubbles, um, he's going to start following his dad. And, and that's what Jesus does. Praise God that Jesus has a, a different, had a different father than Jared. Uh, and what he followed after, what he began to do, is what the father does. Um, and and will be, be he'll he'll spread more uh, light on that now. Okay, so what is it that the father does? It says just as uh, the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whoever he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son, so that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So here we see um, the, the Son is following after the Father. He's doing whatever he sees the Father doing. Uh, and what does he see the Father doing? He sees the Father giving life, raising the dead. And Jesus says, because this is what the Father does, I, the Son, am also doing this. I, I'm I'm joining my father in his in his work, and it's the work of me, of life giving, it's the work work of resurrection. And, and again, it's this beautiful uh, image of Jesus just doing what the Father tells him to do. I think a lot of times we um, think about Jesus doing the things he did, and we're like, well, he's Jesus. Like I can't be like Jesus. He he knows everything that's going to happen. He has all this power. Like he's like you know Superman, um, except. That Jesus, when he came to earth, he lowered himself to become fully human. And, and so what he's doing is he's, he's still relying on the Father. He's looking to the Father, saying, God, I'm, I'm only going to do what you're asking me to do. I'm only going to do what, what you're giving me power to do. And, and how does he know that? By spending time with the Father and doing what he does. And, and later we're going to see in John 17 where Jesus says, I want the people to have the relationship with you that I have. He says, I pray that they may be one as we are one. And so what we're seeing, the reason why we get this beautiful insight uh, into the relationship that Jesus has with his Father is because he's inviting us into that. He wants us to have that same relationship that we may be able to look to the Father um, and do what he says, do what he does. Um, and the way that we do that is, as we see also, Jesus will say, no one can come to the Father except through the Son. So the way that we get to the, the, the Father is through the Son, is spending time with Jesus. As we spend time with Jesus uh, and do what Jesus does, then, and then Jesus is doing what the Father does. And then we want to be disciples who make disciples. So we bring other people along with us, uh, like our children and uh, our friends and those that, that are wanting to know about the Lord. And they do what we do, and we do what Jesus does. Jesus does what the Father does. And so it's this continued um, chain, this continued uh, movement of all of us moving towards the Father. And, and Jesus is saying, what I do is I give, I give life. The Father gives life, and so I also give life. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but is crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. This is the, the promise um, that, that we have. So again, Jesus is saying the Father is the one that gives life. And I want to do what the Father does. And then anyone who believes in me, they will do what I do, which is live. This is the hope that we have, friends. And, and this is so, it's this um, John chapter 5 is so beautiful. I feel like John 3 gets a lot of the press, you know, uh, where Jesus is talking about being born again. And we get John 3.16 and like it's, it's, it's fantastic. But I think that's where most people turn when they um, want to hear the gospel really um, expressed clearly. Uh, but I feel like John chapter 5 gets, uh, gets forgotten here um, of, of how clearly it tells um, what Jesus is about. And if you, I think if you want to know Jesus' mission, like what he's doing and what he's about, um, these passages are really good for that. Jesus is just saying, hey, I just do whatever my father does. And my father is about life. He, he's about raising the dead to life. He's about, about bringing redemption, about bringing the salvation. And so that's what I do. And whoever believes in me, 
will be saved. Whoever believes in me will have this eternal life. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. That's, um, that's what it says. This is the, the, the hope um, that we have. And let's look at the next verse here. Verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Again, we see this, this, the, the fantastic relationship and the, and the back and forth here um, between this is what the Father does, and he said, I'm doing what the Father does, and because of that, now I, I give you this life. Um, and the more that we just get back, we get into that rhythm. What does that look like for, for you and me, um, for us in our lives to say, just what is, what is Jesus doing right now? He's doing what the Father uh, is, is doing. How do we do what the Father does? Let's just join him in that. Let's be aware of the fact that God is working. He never stops working. He, we are safe because he is at work and he's doing what he's going to do. He's giving us life and the Son gives us life if we believe in him. So let's believe in him and let's follow that path. And, uh, and Jesus uh, continues um, here in verses uh, 28 through 30 by saying, Do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. And so Jesus is, is saying, hey, don't be surprised because I'm telling you that there is a time that's coming when this is all going to be over, when the judgment day will come. And uh, and he's saying, the Father has trusted me because now I'm the one that knows you guys. I'm the one that's spending time with you. I, I, I am that bridge uh, from heaven to earth. I'm, the, I'm that bridge of, of uh, God and man. And uh, so he says, now the Father's going to allow me to, to judge. And those that have done evil will, will um, be judged uh, and, and separated from God. And those who have been done good will be united with God forever. And, uh, and sometimes we read this and, and we fall into that, oh, I better do good, or what if I haven't done good enough? And, but when you really read this, uh, when you say it uh, again, of uh, that's what, which he judges, um, he's saying, you know, I don't even have to judge because I, have, I know you. And, and I know that you have believed in me, and if you believe in me, now there's, there's no more judgment. Um, that the, the, all those who believe in Christ, the judgment is, that he has placed his righteousness on us. And uh, so we're, we're not still stuck in having to do performance and good works, but we have our, our um, eternity secured if we believe in Jesus Christ. He's going to pay the punishment for us, and he's going to uh, then uh, be able to sit and judge. And as he judges, he says, welcome. And he presents us to the Father. He presents us to the Father as one of his own. And uh, it's this uh, amazing passage where he's saying that, all right, I, I judge, but my judgment is, is just. And, uh, and he says this, I can do, by myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. This is Jesus. This is Jesus who we think, wow, he's powerful, and Jesus can do whatever he wants, and he can do it. He's like, no, he says, I can't do anything on my own. I only do what, what pleases the Father. And, and this, uh, this verse that he says, I don't do anything to please myself, to bring pleasure or joy to myself. I'm doing everything I'm doing to bring pleasure to the Father, to please the Father. Wow, how does that change our lives? Because I think so many people, um, we think about our relationship with God to say like, well, I want to come to God so I can feel good so that I can be at peace, so that I can be at rest, so that I can be happy, so I can be joyful, so I can have hope, all these things. like I, And then, God, you're going to bring that pleasure to me. Um, but when Jesus goes to the Father, he's not going to the Father to say, Father, help me feel good. Help me feel okay. Help me feel better. Help me have this. Help me do good. He's saying, no, I'm coming to the Father because I want to see what you're doing and join you in what you're doing and bring you glory and honor and bring pleasure to you. It's a very different way of looking at the world and, and our lives. 
And, and right now, uh, when everything's upside down and our priorities are, are flipped around, it's easy for us again to say, okay, well, how can I be happy again? How can I have pleasure again? How can I have security? Um, but what if we flip that and said, I want to come to the Father and say, Father, I just want to see what you're doing and join you in what you're doing bring you joy, bring you pleasure, join you in your work. What do you have today? What are you doing today? What are we up to today? Let me join you in doing that. And in the process of that, friends, we feel joy and happiness and security and safety. Like we get the things that we want. We actually will find that that pleasure. I don't know if pleasure is the right word, but we'll find that peace and that joy if we come to the Father and say, what are you doing? How do I join you in what you and the way we come to the Father is through the Son, through Jesus Christ. So that's our encouragement today. Um, John chapter 5, uh, read through it again. There's just some really great stuff uh, in there. I pray that that will be an encouragement to you, that you will be a son and a daughter of God because of Jesus Christ. If you are not today, make that commitment. Follow after him. If you've been kind of lost and kind of uh, apart from him, come back and just say, yes, uh, I commit myself to you uh, God the Father, I come to you through the Son, Jesus Christ, not trying to earn my way, but receiving redemption. And now let me just look to you. Look to the Father. He's good. When you're feeling stressed, come to the Father, pray. <laughs> Fill your, 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 your heart with songs of praise. Remind uh, yourself of that which brings joy and, uh, and come to him. He is good. He's a good, good Father. We seek him uh, and we find our peace in him. Let me pray for us. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you that you are always at work. You're always working. You're always there. You're caring for us. And so uh, we just pray that we may find our security and our safety and our hope in you. And uh, thank you, God. May we join you in your work. May we, may we look to seek to please you today instead of seeking for you to please us. Uh, may we remi be reminded that you are safe and secure on your throne and we have nothing to fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. See you at uh, church on Sunday morning, uh, and, uh, and then back here Bible study next Tuesday. God bless.